Hello, today we're going to look at ID mask baking, but first let's have a little dive into what they are and why would you actually even want one at all. Essentially an ID mask is a single colour texture that's discarded at the end of the texturing process because its role is to assign certain masks to certain areas. You bake it by applying materials to the high poly to indicate what areas should be coloured or indicated differently on the high poly to other areas. And then this creates a texture, like you can see on the right, with many different vibrant colours that then can be differentiated against each other in Substance Painter using the tools available in the masking menu to allow putting different materials on different parts. You can see on this train here I have a blue paint on the bottom and a sort of red paint on the top. And I didn't have to actually go in and paint these on because I was just able to select I want that area to be blue and I want that area to be red. The baking of ID masks is exceptionally useful on hard surface work and in generally anything where you might find a lot of parts in a mesh on the high poly that you'll be baking down to one section on a low poly that you're going to want a texture in a certain way. Without any further ado, let's get into making some. We're going to have a look at creating an ID mask in Substance Painter and in Marmoset Toolbag. We'll bake these from a model we create in Blender. You can see this model here is simply a high poly. We have a sort of container and a cut, and as well as that we have a low poly, which is simply the shape of a cube, and has had its UVs created. So, let's look at creating our ID mask. To create the differentiation between the two parts on our ID mask, we will need to put them on different materials on the high poly mesh. So let's just delete both of these materials, and just give them each a new material. It doesn't really matter what you call them, but I'm going to call this one inset, and I'm going to call this one case. Maybe I should have called it container to match the mesh, but again, it's really not too important, as long as you're on different material channels. Then we're just going to give the low poly, which I've affectionately named the Mega Cube, its own material. <clears throat> Once this is all done, we can export the high poly mesh to an FBX file. Name it as such and choose selected objects so we only export the high poly pieces. This will be required for Substance Painter but not for Marmoset Toolbag because in Marmoset we can arrange the files later. We'll look at Substance Painter first. And then we can export the low poly of the cube. And that's it. Just bearing in mind that this assumes that everything has been prepared <coughs> in advance in terms of UVs, etc. And everything is all ready to bake. All we've done is the materials. I'll be releasing a comprehensive look at UVs at some point in the future, once I've finished producing the video. Now we're going to bake the ID mask in Substance Painter first, so let's get right into it. I'm just going to start a new project, and select the low poly we exported earlier. I'm going to change the null on that format to O. Actually no, I'm going to leave it as DirectX because um, Substance Painter does not bake. OpenGL maps particularly well. I'm just going to click OK. I have it set to Unreal Engine at the top there for the template, but it doesn't really matter as long as you have it set to a fairly conventional PBR template. So we've got a cube here, and I'm going to open up my baking menu in the texture settings. It's over here because I've custom closed it off in the window, but yours may be down here or otherwhere. But as long as you look for that icon, you can find the texture set settings with a little issue. I'm just going to select Bake Mesh Maps, and now I'm going to choose my high poly. I'd like to bake it in 4K. Now, I just want to untick everything except ID mask pieces. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll bake the lot. Uh, let's do a test bake at 1K. And um, the rules of metamapping say I need 8 pixels of dilation for a 1K map. No anti aliasing, everything else is fine. Check the ID. The color source is material color, which means it's going to take the materials from our colors in Blender. But we don't necessarily want this, because we didn't give our materials in Blender any particular colour. So we'd end up with an ID mask where it'd be just white and white. So let's use mesh ID slash polygroup, and then every individual mesh on the high poly will be baked as its own part on the ID mask. Let's bake this and see how it goes. Oh, great. Of course the results of the bevels on the edges are a little rough, but the overall bake 
is as expected. And now if we check out the ID mask, we need to here. We've got a pretty good differentiation between our two panels. And we can by creating a new layer, adding a black mask, and adding a color selection. Choose one of these colors and make it any color we like. Or mask any kind of material or anything we like to that. Now let's have a look at how to bake these in Marmoset Toolbag. So here we are in Marmoset. Let's import to a similar method as before, except it's a bit easier in Marmoset because I'm just going to select the two FPX files and drag and drop them in here. I've got the two cube high and cube low now. I'm just going to create a bake project and drag the high into the high and the low into the low. Now the important part for baking an ID mask is to have the create map selected. So I'm just going to untick all the maps I have right now because I only want to create the ID mask because it is our focus today. And I'm going to click configure and what I'm going to want is the material ID. Now this will sample the material from the high poly and assign a different color for every high poly material on the ID mask. So let's take the material ID off here. Choose a path. It's going to take that from my folder here. Create a new folder for baking, which is something I strongly recommend you do using Marmoset Tooler. And this is the event. So, all things in check. I'm just going to reduce the bake quality down to 1k because I don't need to go as far as the 2k bake. I'm just going to click bake. Perfect. I'm just going to change this from a uh, Photoshop document bake to a JPEG so I can easier show you the results. So if we have a look in the bake now, we can see it's created a very clean ID mask because the bakes generally produced by Marmoset for the bag are of excellent quality compared to the Substance Painter Baker. We do have a little bit of blurring around the edges here though, um, created probably mostly by the difference between our high poly and our low poly and the general kind of, you're asking quite a lot of the bake here. I would generally include more geometry for a bake that was going to be that harsh. And then that texture map can easily be imported into Substance Painter just by dragging and dropping it into this project here as a texture. Project import. And then it can be assigned just by dragging and dropping it over here into the ID mask selection. Now a little word of warning is that if you bake in Substance Painter and in Toolbag to create different maps, if you bake an ID map and a normal map differently, you can see the alignment is different. They don't quite uh, match at all. So I encourage you to bake your ID mask in the same tool with which you're going to bake whatever else you, you, you create as your maps for that project. Well, with those maps baked, that's just about everything for today. And you can create ID masks in Substance Painter and Marmoset Toolbag. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.